Oto kata kata brashanta kata brashke la bashanda ele kapara da boshi kapara da boshanti breketo telegete breketo janda bala 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 ba makato barata bush kunto logoto brokoto logoto brokoto mashi kala ba 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 ento logoto bro junto koto brokoto koto brokoto shanti brikete kata Anta laga te brakato laga bashan da brakato jaman te brakato brash kanta laba ili kunto brakato malaka pa 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 eshi kete malaka nda brakato jante inta laga te brakato janta kata brashanta malaka pa 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 laga malaka te brakato malaka te brashanta kata Ale kapara ikunto brushanti kata kata ala kete brakato loko do brokoto loko do intelega shanti brakato shanti kata kata intelega to brokoto loko to brokoto loko to brokoto loko to brokoto loko to mashi kete brokoto loko to brokoto loko to brokoto loko to brokoto loko to brokoto mashi kata ika makata para kabu shanti brakato shanti kata 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 Intela kata brakato la kata brakato la kata brakato la koto brakato la koto mashi kata brashanti koto ma anta la kata brashanta. Father, we thank you. We bless your name in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Bless you, Lord God Almighty. Ma kapala da bu shanti brakato shanta elite parandos komala kapari da bu shanti kratos kati brakate. Intele gete breke tolo koto broko tolo koto broko tolo koto broko to ragada ba shanta kato shanta. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see Cecilia, um, Sheila. God bless you so much. Begin to like, share the broadcast. Leboze ekredo shemante paradasha. Ali koro do bo shanti parada bo shanta. Ali koto broko to shanta braka tela kaba shanda. Elikte parando shkema la katubra askira da ba shandi brokotonda la ba shaya liko borodo bogodo borogodo brokodo logodo brokodo logodo brokodo logodo halaka pa 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 shika parada ba shanti parada ba shanti parada ba ante legete breketo logodo brokodo logodo brokodo logodo brokodo lekepete brekete lekete brekete Yes, Daniel, I see you. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Manda baradaba, manda baradaba, manda baradaba, manda baradaba. She kaparadabu, she korodo bogodo borogodo. Entela gada breka tonto logoto brokoto logoto. Adi borodo bo, adi borodo bo, adi borodo bo, adi borodo bo. Alla kaparadu, she ma kaparana mayanta la baradaba kapa. Eli koto brokoto lokoto brokoto lokoto brokoto mashi koto brokoto lokoto brokoto lagashanta prakato janta katam Father be exalted be lifted we thank you Lord Jesus somebody if you are joining just begin to pray in the language of the Spirit la kapata barato jekata parani makapakato shandi anto lokoto brokoto lokoto brokoto lokoto brokoto lokoto Manto goto 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 shika parada bo shanti breketo kata kata ante legete breketo logoto brokoto logoto brokoto maji koto brokoto logoto brokoto logoto brokoto rego go go do jondo go do go do go do go do go do go do alika parada bo shanti breketo janta kata 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 lika ba 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 Mali konto broko rodo shandi brikete kata brakata intelegata malakata brakata malakata brakata malakata brakata malakata brakata malakata brakata malakata kaga 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 go shando broko to koto 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 ali kabada ba shando broko to manto logo to broko to logo to broko to logo to iya kapa pa pa iya kapa pa 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 iya kapa pa 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 Shakata, I see um, Apostle Eunice. God bless you. Mande peride bo shanta parada ba shakala. Anto brokoto, anto brokoto, anto brokoto, anto brokoto, anto brokoto. 
Maka papa pere da ba 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 ya kapara da bushando brokoto kata braka tola kapara da bushanda ento logoto brokoto logoto brokoto logoto brokoto logoto brokoto mashika kaka rada shante bara da bushanda likemente bere de be 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 Maka parada shika palanda shki ikre no mashandi kalado shata. Lord, we bless your name. We give you praise. Mando brokoto, mando brokoto, mando brokoto. Somebody invite, 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 invite someone. Hallelujah. Invite someone to be part in the name of Jesus. Invite somebody to be blessed in the name of Jesus. Tonight is a wonderful and an awesome night. And you cannot afford to miss the encounter of tonight. I see God go ahead of his word, the word that is about to be released. Wow. I see Lucky says, I have learned a lot from your ministry. And today I am here, okay, to be more blessed. I see Davis. God bless you so much. God bless you. Please invite your family. Let them join. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Relevegedo Gerati Palado Shantakata. In Togorodo, Jeka Palando Shela Mama Mayatapa. Areko Koto La Caparadabo Shantakata Yatata. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise God. Today, we are going to be looking at something very powerful. You know, um, the prophetic is one ministry that um, is mostly very phenomenal. But I tell you, aside the, the um, spectacular nature of the prophetic ministry you need to understand that it is the most hated most attacked and the kind of ministry that listen the devil is seriously after and we need to really put things in place you see if we do not teach about the prophetic we are only giving rooms for false prophets to feed our flocks with messages that does not go in line with what the prophetic really means. And hallelujah. So if you are joining this broadcast, please invite somebody. Let that person be part. Tell him something is happening here. Now, when we talk about the prophetic, what is simply the prophetic? The prophetic is simply um, the relationship between you and your God. When you talk about prophetic, most of the time people think that it's about um, hearing God's voice and prophesying. That is not it. The prophetic is far way beyond what you are thinking of. As a matter of fact, the prophetic is what gives us access or the how we are able to interact with the supernatural God. So how we are able to relate with him, how we are able to deepen our relationship with him. You see that? So the prophetic is simply the supernatural or the interaction between a spirit and the physical so the physical trying to interact with the spiritual is what we call the is simply what the prophetic is about so anybody that is prophetic should know that he's somebody who doesn't take spiritual things lightly the bible says that we are spiritual people it says the spiritual man. Who is that? We. Our generation is given birth to spiritual people. 
the fact that you are not a prophet does not mean that you are not prophetic. To be prophetic simply means to be spiritual. And the Bible says that to be spiritually minded means life and peace. But to be carnally minded means death. So now, all of us, all believers, have been called to be spiritual. You have been called to be spiritual, irrespective of your background, where you come from, what have you, you are called to be spiritual. So to be spiritual doesn't mean you necessarily have to be a prophet. But to be spiritual simply means that you have the consciousness of Christ. You have the consciousness of the things of the Spirit. I remember last week I spoke about um, the deep things of God, the secret place. And I told you that God has secrets. And God has a place where he stores those secrets. They are not on the mountaintop. They are not in the valley. The secrets of God is within you. But how, you, how to access them is the problem. So we are on a journey to bring out everything that is hidden in our lives. The supernatural, whether the gift, miracles, whatever. On this platform, you will know those secrets. And I pray that it will help you to be able to manifest wherever you are. Yes. So now, when we talk about the prophetic, you need to know that it's the mother of all the other ministries. The prophetic is the mother of all the other ministries. Whether the apostolic, the pastoral, um, the evangelical, the teaching ministry, they all be were built on the foundation of the prophetic ministry. You need to understand that it takes the prophetic for a man to be able to see God, a man to be able to have revelation, a man to be able to interact in the spirit. Okay? Now, when we say somebody is an apostle, a lot of the times people don't try to understand, but let me just make it so simple for you. The apostle is one who has been given the ability to... Um, to touch every part of ministry, every part of the ministry. I mean, every part of the office. He he can in a while operate as a prophet, operate as what a view and all that. Now, what you need to understand is this: the apostolic ministry itself, in the days of Jesus, is not a definite title that was given. No. It was a description explaining an assignment. Example, when you say, prof, when you say um, an apostle, all you are trying to say is this, the one who has been sent by God or the sent one who Jesus sent. So there were 12 apostles and that word apostle means the sent ones. So Jesus sent them. Sent some to the Gentiles, sent some to the Hebrews, you know, and so on and so forth. So the apostle by nature could be a prophet. But because he has been sent, he's an apostle. That's it. Now watch this clearly. I am an apostle to my ministry. I'm an apostle to the people God has sent me. Yet, I carry the prophetic grace. You see that? So the apostolic ship was it, was that. It was the governing body. Those who founded or Jesus started with them. And those are the people they call them the foundational apostles. And when a man is called a foundational apostle, all you need to know is that he can be an evangelist, he can be a pastor, he can be a teacher. That is why an apostle does not really, you, people don't really know where he, he belongs. 
So the apostle can be a prophet. The apostle can be an evangelist. That could be his main assignment to evangelize or to be in the, to operate with the prophetic or to be a pastor or to be a teacher. But because he has been sent by the Lord Jesus to pioneer or to start a foundation ministry, he is an apostle to that commission. So I am an apostle to my commission, the people I have been sent to. You see, so we are apostles, but so the apostle can be a prophet. So when you take the apostle Johnson Suleiman, no one should tell you that that man is a prophet. Yes, that man is typically a prophet. That man is a prophet. Yes. So, the word, the term apostle, you need to understand this. So, every ministry that came to be came from the prophetic. Because we, the spirit we are all operating in is the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus. So if you are called to testify about Jesus, you are already functioning in the prophetic. But you see, prophets were the institution in the kingdom that God began with. They were the institution God began with. So no matter how today we are fighting this ministry, we will never succeed. Anybody trying to fight the prophetic will never succeed. You will just be tired and give it up. Because you cannot, the more you touch one, the more thousands are coming. That is it. So now, this prophetic ministry has suffered a lot of damage. And some of the damage it has suffered, it has been suffering from is within its own office. Because most prophetic vessels got up knowing how to only hear the voice, but they did not build themselves with doctrine. So most prophets are not good at doctrine at all. And that is because they were raised hearing the voice. So because they were hearing the voice, most a lot of them did not take time to study doctrine, to guide their lives with doctrine. So because of this, there are a lot of excesses that most prophets brings in. And those excesses in turns to draw all kinds of enmity and all kinds of attention. So the prophetic ministry in our time has been fought and men are still fighting it. But you cannot blame those who are fighting it. The reason why you can't blame them is because a lot of prophets are not worded. That is the truth. They are not worded. They don't know the word. Their lives are not guided by the word. You see that? If a teacher would be able to teach based on revelation, he needs a prophetic grace. For a pastor to be able you know, to, to have dreams, have visions, and to be able to, he needs the prophetic grace. So every other office you can think about needs the prophetic grace to be able to understand the deep things of God. So Paul the Apostle said in first, if first uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, that the Lord, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he, will, he may give you the spirit of wisdom 
and revelation of the knowledge of him. You see that? I pray for you that God will fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So now, the prophetic ministry is the most dramatized ministry, is the most spectacular ministry. Oh yeah. And because of this, a lot of teachers have problem with it. But the truth is this, there is no prophet, there is no prophet called by God who doesn't have drama in his life. It's not possible. That is why most of the prophetic verses you see, it looks as if they are bragging. They are not. That is the nature of the ministry. If you carry that grace, you will do more than some of them are doing. Oh, yeah. And most, of, most people, because they are not into the prophetic office, they don't know that this prophetic office operates with quotes, signs, symbols, tokens, and, you know, what have you. You see that? So when you are communicating this to people, because somebody lacks the revelation to be able to enter into that realm, they find problem with the prophetic ministry. Yeah. But I see a major prophet rising up. I see an army of prophets rising up. I see men and women who are standing out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Yeah. So now, let's quickly look at something very powerful. The wounds of the prophet. Now, because of this, the prophetic ministry is one of the ministry that is easily attacked. And today I came to tell you how you can hold yourself to minimize these attacks. If you are called into the prophetic ministry, I tell you your temptations are higher. The things you will face is not a joke at all. Oh, yes. And let me tell you something. If you want to be in the good books of men, so that everybody can say, I asked for this one, he's very cool, he's very nice, he knows how to, then you will never, you will never function in the prophetic ministry. So people try to, you will never function in the prophetic ministry. Oh, yes. Because the prophetic is one of the ministry that whether you like it or not, criticism will come in. Media will come for you. Oh, yes. Especially in our generation. And some self-righteous Christians will try to use scriptures try to analyze and yet they won't they won't be able to even check you right and why is it so the nature of the ministry yeah now let's say for instance do they know that there are prophets that before they can prophesy they need to dance and be able to prophesy so to the teacher, he's looking at this as, mm, this is just madness. But to the prophet, he knows that this uh, is what we call the prophetic gymnastic. You know, in those acts, he's able to align in order to see things in the spirit realm. So never try to please people and make people look nice and try to be in the good books of everybody. This was not Jesus, how he was. Remember, the Pharisees that knew the law wanted to check him out. You need to know that. If you are in the prophetic, you will definitely face it. You face it. You will face it. So today, let's quickly look into 
what the Lord has for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mashaka parada bo shande braka paha. Manda balada ba shande kata ya da ba kata. Manda laga da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba. Yes. So lebaza to shati ya kata. Now, the prophet basically is a carrier of God's voice. So which means when God speaks, he hears and communicates that to God's people or communicates that to himself. So the prophet hears God and communicates it. And that is what prophecy, uh, prophesying is about. So all this is to create a good relationship between God and his people. Now, the Bible says something in Mark chapter 4, verses 3 to 8. The Bible says that a farmer went out to sow seeds. And the kind of method he used was the broadcasting method where he threw the seeds. And the Bible says some fell on the roadside. And the enemy came for the seeds. The more reason why prof, the prophetic ministry is attacked is not because of the prophet, but because of the word in the mouth of the prophet. Hallelujah. The word in the mouth of the prophet. And when you read in uh, Matthew chapter 5, the verse 10 to 12, the Bible says that, For persecution, we will be persecuted. Yes, he said, we will be persecuted. So persecution is part of our lives. So you cannot run away from persecution at all and at all. Then you are not ready to, to run to walk in the office of the prophet. Not at all. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So let's read. The Bible says that. Rejoice. Okay, from the verse 11. It said, Blessed are ye when men shall reveal thee and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against against you. Falsely, for my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So if they, pro they persecuted the prophets before you came, who are you not to, who are you that they can't, they won't persecute you? Hallelujah. Do you know how Isaiah died? Isaiah was cut into two by the king Manasseh. And you will find this in the Bible, but this is in ancient, in the histories of um, Israel, the historian books. He was cut into two. Yeah, he was cut into two. By the king Manasseh. How did Zechariah die? Zechariah was killed in the temple of God. How did John the Baptist die? He was beheaded. You see that? So there are many things going on in our generation. To the extent that many people are hiding their titles. They don't want to be called prophets again. They want you to call them Brother Sunday. Mr. So-so and so. Listen to me. I am a prophet and I'm proud to be one and I'm not ready to change any name. If Jesus has given me that name, then I have embraced it with all my heart. Yes. So let's look at the wounds. The reason why the enemy is able to touch the prophet is because there are certain wounds in the prophetic ministry. 
There are certain wounds in the prophetic ministry that if you don't cover them or dress them, the enemy is going to use that as an advantage to step on your wound. Wound number one. Wound number one. In wound number one, or what the enemy is trying to use to attack the, your wound, number one, is accusations. Now, every prophet will have that womb that the enemy will try to touch it. Oh, yes. The reason is that spiritual things, spiritual things are not like the physical things. Spiritual things are foolishness to our media, are foolishness, are, are foolishness to social media, is foolishness to many observers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Like I was talking to you right now, somebody just sent me a message. <laughs> and this was this is what he said. He said, You are not serious. You are not serious. What is the need to have a WhatsApp number? So I'm just talking to you right now, but somebody's already attacking me from my um, um, WhatsApp line. And that is because they don't have respect. They don't have respect. Because no matter how, there is that wound. There is that wound that the enemy will try to touch. And why? Will the enemy try to touch it? Because God has created those wounds there. Why I'm calling wounds? Because no matter who you are as a prophet, there is an amount of weakness that the enemy will try to stay deep to touch it. Will stay deep to touch it. And the first thing that the enemy uses is accusations. When we say accusations, accusations are real. If it has not taught you, it simply means that you were never called at the first place. Oh, yeah. So not everything you hear on social media about a pastor being accused means that it is true. But let's even say that it is true. Even if it is true, who have he sinned against? It is his God. Let him settle with it. But why have people taken it to become something big as if they have not seen that before? You need to know that the prophetic is, has a certain weakness that the enemy is always looking up for it. And one of its weakness is especially when you prophesy and it does not come to pass. When you speak and it does not come to pass. People don't take time to check to see whether who was at fault. Who did that? What is the reason? What is the reason behind this prophecy not come to pass? All they will say is that he's a false prophet. False prophet. In our time now, the easiest word is the false prophet. False prophet. And what you need to understand is that a lot of us in the prophetic ministry, we are weeping, but we can't tell you. You see that? Most prophets are going through a lot. And what people don't understand is that every ministry God gives you, there is a wound. There is a wound attached to that. There is 
something attached to that that the devil will look for. And as soon as he discovers it, the first thing he does is to bring accusations. Accusations, whether false or right accusations. Remember the devil himself is an accuser of the brethren. And accusations are real. Accusations are real. When you read Daniel chapter 6, the verse 24, the Bible speaks about the accusations they brought to Daniel. They brought before the king in charge of, in, on, in the case of Daniel. When they realized that Daniel was undefeatable, he was so excellent in what he does, they realized that mm, we need to, we need to work, strategize to get him killed. And can I tell you the weakness of every prophet? The weakness of every prophet is his ability not to compromise. Every prophet speaks the mind of God, and that is his weakness. That is his wounds. And the devil will attack you with all manner of accusations just to make or destroy anything you are trying to build. Anything just to render the vessel useless. You see that? So why do he use his accusations? Yeah. Your womb is what you are, I mean, the wound is what you are really, your weakness in God. What is your weakness? You do not have power on your own. When I say weaknesses here, I am not talking about it in the negative sense only. I am talking about it also in um, a godly sense. The weakness of every prophet is that he does not have his own power. He is controlled by what God asks him to say. He is moved when God says he should move. He speaks when God says speak. You see that? I remember there was a lady, the Lord told me, tell that lady she is a witch. The day I spoke that word, for a whole two months, I didn't find peace. The family was on me, eh? <laughs> but God told me, say it. I said, I, he said, say it. I said, he said, say it. Then I said it. The family was on me. The, the brother has to remove a gun and threaten me that if they find out and it's not true, I am finished. What is my weakness? My weakness is simply trying to obey my master because you are a bound servant. The word he has kept in your mouth is not your word. It is his word. And you, you must not hold it down to share. Yeah. So the moment I spoke, the family was on my neck. But you see, in the midst of it all, God saved me. Accusations. People began to rattle all around. He's a false prophet. He's this, he's that. And why do the enemy does that? Number one, the enemy brings accusation on a prophet to destroy the image of his ministry. Whenever you are accused, the intention of the intention of accusation is to make your ministry or to damage the image of your ministry. Such that anyone that wants to find out or is looking for you, you see that because of what they have heard about you, you will not be sick after. So, you realize similar situation happened in First Kings, especially in the latter part of First Kings. The Bible speaks about a prophet by name Makai. After Ahab has consulted 400 of his prophets and they all gave him false prophecies. Then Jehoshaphat demanded, is there any other prophets of the Lord here? And Ahab said, as for that one, he doesn't speak anything good about me. You see that? So because already they are accusing the man, but yet he was the man with the solid word. I want you to know 
whether you are going through any form of accusations, it is not a sign to give up. It is a sign to stay focused. Nobody called you. In fact, when they call you, didn't they tell you that it was part of the terms and conditions people you signed before? <laughs> I don't know whether you have ever joined a platform or you are trying to register for something or sign to something, sign up for something, and they tell you the terms and conditions, and you still subscribe to it, because if you subscribe to it, it means you are ready for it. So be ready for accusations. And I am saying this because I have been a victim in several ways. Oh yeah. And some of these accusations does not only come from... Um, the people of the world, but even your own friends, even your loved ones, even with people who are also in ministry, colleague prophets, colleague apostles, colleague teachers. You see that? And it is targeted at destroying your image. Destroying your image. Yes. I remember a young lady stood out and was like, this was a lady who wanted me. Wanted me badly. I don't know how that one was. And what happened was that I was very resistant because I have, I already know the one I want to marry. We have already started scheduling things, you know. So, what happened was that this lady took it to another level, polluted the minds of my church members, especially the leadership. And some of them that have been with them for years be actually believed it. <laughs> believed it. And fought me left, right, center. But you see, if the thing is not from God, it will not stand. It will not stand. The image. So when you, the image. Now, number two reason why the devil accuses you is to cause division among the brethren in your ministry. The enemy's target is to accuse you to cause division so that there will be division. You will be divided. You will be divided. So there are a lot of ministries today. You only see it with your eyes, but when you enter inside, you realize that they are divided. And that is because they, there is an accusation going on within that ministry. So Paul the Apostle told the church of Rome, that mark them that causes division. He said, mark them and avoid them. How do they cause this division? By bringing accusations. Accusations. Yes. So when you read um, Revelation 12, 10, the Bible says that the devil is an accuser of the bread. Wherever Satan enters, he tries to create an atmosphere of accusations. Let's move to number three. To resist the prophet from sowing higher. Accusations is to resist you. Oh yeah. As a matter of fact, a lot of you, your connections have been destroyed. Many people that followed you have redrawn. Many people have redrawn from you because somebody somehow told them something negative about you. It doesn't only happen in ministry. It also happened even in your own house. Among your business friends, someone someone you see that? 
they resist you. The intention is to resist you. And do you know what resistance simply means? When we say resistance, resistance is simply um, causing friction. Okay? Putting a stumbling block. Anything against your flow. So that you cannot flow well. Accusations. You see that? And number four, to cause confusion in your ministry. To cause confusion. The Bible said our God is not the author of confusion. So the devil comes in to cause confusion. So as a prophet, you must know that this is one aspect the devil attacks us from. But I am looking straight into your eye and I minister to you. Any form of accusation in your life shall not stand. Any form of accusations will not hold water. Anybody that has taken it upon himself to accuse you negatively, wrongly, because of their own selfish interest, I decree and declare, it shall not stand in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke every accuser by the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare it is done. Hallelujah. The second thing is persecution. The enemy uses persecution to come after you. When the enemy discover your wound, he comes with it comes to attack you with the weapon of persecution. Yeah. There are a lot of us going through a series of persecution in where we have planted churches, where we have ministries. Listen to me. Never, never surrender. If God is involved, the more darker it is becoming, the more your testimony will be greater. Yes. I remember I went to a place to do a crusade. I went to a place to do a crusade. Okay, let me share this story to you. I remember when I started ministry, I had a couple of friends that came to the ministry. People came. Along the line, something happened. And this was what happened. Um... I had a friend of mine that I invited him to ch the church. After ministering, this guy was very bold to tell me that I was not called. That he was called. So if it will be, I should um, hand over the church to him. <laughs> the church to him and be a singer because per him, what the Lord is telling him that is that I am a singer. I am not called into, you know, yeah. I'm just trying to sh tell you something. I said, wow. And before I know it, this guy was able to manipulate my old congregation against me. Oh, yes. Because he, he was rich. He had money. And some of us were in school, so we didn't know what to do. So whatever he says, the people hear him more than they hear me. Oh, poverty, poverty. I curse you in Jesus' name. <laughs> so he was able. Yeah. You see that? So when that happened, there was a whole lot of persecutions. I have been to chief houses one after the other explaining myself, explain, look, because there were so many reports, reports from the land where you are doing ministry, report from members, report from people who, oh, come on. I remember one time there was a group that, um, group that they wanted to come and beat me up simply because I gave a prophecy to one of their daughters and they are not in agreement 
and they came. Hey, did I say they were coming? As they were preparing in the night, before the next day, all of them were striked with diarrhea. They started running diarrhea for full one week. When they recovered, none of them remembered. <laughs> persecution you will have persecution don't run away from it all you have to do is to stand on your grounds because the devil will come with persecutions yes people will come to you let's go to court people will threaten you with all manner of things it is part of your calling brother it is part of it it's part of it but if God is on your side, the scripture says that who can be against you? Who? No one. If God is on your side, there is no one that can be against you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I hope somebody is catching it. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. So let's quickly look at Timothy. Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses um, 12. Look at what the Bible says. He said that, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Timothy says that anyone that wants to live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. Because if you want to live godly, be ready for persecution. So, when God is raising a prophet, he arms you to be able to withstand all these blows that is coming from the kingdom of darkness. Many people have run, have left the ministry because of the blow that came from this dark realm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, yea. And all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus, shall suffer persecution. Yes, persecution. And when you read from the verses 11, do you know what he said? He said that persecution, affliction, which came unto me at Antioch, as Iconion and at Lestra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. You see that? Paul is telling you that God is always there to deliver you from every persecution. But you need to know that it is part of your journey. So, most prophets love complaining too much. You are not the only one going through it. Anyone chosen by God is going through it. <laughs> Except that you want to really be in the good books of men. But if you want to stand out for God, you want to carry the voice of God, just know that you will be persecuted. You will be persecuted. You will be persecuted. A time came in the life of my ministry that my membership went to zero. Oh yeah. Some of you don't know. I've started, I started a church, it collapsed. I started again, I started again. I, ah. I think the fourth one is now the one that our numbers have moved from um, ones to hundreds and now we are almost heading towards thousand persecutions 
Yeah. Persecutions. So are you running a ministry? Are you running a ministry? Are you running a church? Then don't give it up. If only God has called you. It is part of the things you have signed up for. So it is not about leisure. It's not about it is part. See the way people are attacking the prophet Hubert Angel. Look at how people are attacking the Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Not to talk about the prophet T.B. Joshua. See the trouble he went through. Even he died and people were still celebrating. Let me tell you something. To me, this is how I know that the man is truly a genuine prophet. Yes, truly, truly a genuine prophet. Yeah. To the point that he died and people were still celebrating and were jumping and praising. And, you know, I was like, really? Then this man was genuinely genuine. Yes. See how they are attacking um, the prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. Why all those attacks? Why are they attacking Bushiri so much? Prophet Bush, Shepherd Bushiri. Why? The reason is simple. He signed up for it because it is part of his package. It is part of the package in the prophetic ministry. You cannot, how you cannot You cannot be in this prophetic ministry and the devil will not be looking for your hair to cut. Those prophets who don't want their hairs to cut are those who have compromised. They are those who have joined to eat on the table of Baal and Jezebel. They are the prophets who have surrendered, have sold, have sold their life for pottage, you know. They are the prophet who has abused themselves with the idolatry of, um, of the queen of Babylon. I want you to know, if you want to stand out godly, you, need, you will be persecuted. So being a prophet, you want to be fine, then I don't see you functioning well. Check all the prophets that you know that teaches the word. None of them are not, all of them are attacked. All of them has been attacked. Yes. Lovi, who, 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 they have been attacked. Except you are not a prophet. You will definitely be attacked. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. You will be attacked. So, persecution is part. Persecution is part. So, what do you do? Work on yourself. Keep building on integrity. Let the persecution that comes to you be the false type. If it is the true type, you know you have to bl blame yourself. Let it be there by building integrity. You see, the truth is this. Being a prophet doesn't mean you are fully a spirit. There is that human aspect of you that will always try to make people mock at you. Oh yes, after you have prophesied, I saw this in the realm of the spirit. I did this in the realm, blah, blah, blah. Before you know it, when they come to check the prophet sleeping, they realize that the prophet is snoring. <sighs> because there are people who doesn't believe you are even a prophet. <laughs> you are even a, a human being. So build on integrity. Build on integrity. Listen to me. Never compromise your principles. 
Okay? Never. Never at all. Never at all. Never at all and at all and at all. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> this never compromise your standards. I am telling you, if it has to take you to build a shield around you, do it. Oh, yes. You know, there was one man of God that passed um, recently in Nigeria whose hand has been upon his ears for years till the, since the day God called him till his day of death. I believe by now as they were burying himself, they kept their hand there because God has instructed him to give that ear to him. And since that day, the man has held his ear. What am I saying here? No matter who you are, you can't tell him to bring that hand down. You must build on integrity. Be truthful. Be accountable to your audience. I'm talking about your members and to your God. If my members understand, the people God has sent me to understand me, I don't need anybody on social media, whether you agree or you don't agree, it is your own pepper soup. <laughs> you know, you need to understand that integrity is a key in making God to deliver you from every attack of the enemy when it comes to accusations. Yeah, accusations and persecutions. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Labaradabashanta. Let me share something to you. I remember there was, a, there was um, a story. A time came that my own family stood out and demanded that I either follow them and leave God or I follow God and leave them. And I stood up and told them, I am ready to leave you guys alone. Oh yes, I am ready to come out from the family. That was That is how crazy I am. Because I wouldn't compromise the standard of God, my God, to anybody. Yes. There are some of you that relate with the opposite sex anyhow. Listen to me. If you want to be destroyed easily, if you want... To be destroyed easily, easily. Be relating with sisters anyhow. You can sleep in one room with another girl. Hey, no, I know myself. I can't. I have to run for my life. You need to build integrity. Let them know that this you don't tolerate. This you don't. I was speaking with one um one of um, Bishop Oyedepo's sons, and he said something. He said that when Bishop sees, let's say you are two people in, on his, at his school, when he sees that you are even moving with the opposite sex and you are chatting for long and he can get down from his car and Bring a whip and whip the two of you. <laughs> so build integrity. It's very important. Because it will help you to go far. Because the enemy is always looking for a striking point but Jesus said he cometh but he has nothing in me yeah he has nothing in me persecution now that 
Someone say, yes, that's true. I served under him. <laughs> he can whip you. You see that? Now, let's look at the third wound that you need to deal with. And that is the wound of sacrifice and obedience. You see, the truth is that the life of the prophet is a sacrificial life. It is a life that you must sacrifice, keep sacrificing. Okay. You must sacrifice. You must sacrifice. Because if you cannot sacrifice, so the enemy understands that a lot of Christians are not ready for sacrificial work. Oh yeah. Now, what is the difference between obedience and sacrifice? We always use the scripture that says obedience is better than sacrifice as an excuse. Obedience is doing exactly what you are told to do. But sacrifice is going beyond what you are asked to do. So you were supposed to have worked for six hours, but you decide to go 16 hours. Sacrifice. You were supposed to have given 20 cities. You decide to give 2,000 cities. That is what we call sacrifice. But unfortunately, a lot of us don't know that it is part of our weakness. So the enemy strikes on that and has hindered many blessings, many people from really breaking through. Because God will never give you anything he has not tested you for. You must go through the test to be able to attain. Next week, I'll be talking about the five realms of power. The five realms of power. And you must understand that it takes certain mindset or certain sacrifice to be able to enter that realm. Oh yeah, and this is the quote many people lack. And because they lack it, they end up accusing prophets. They accuse prophets. If a prophet can bring out money miracle, they are like, yeah, how is it possible? I have done it, it works. Oh yes. It work, it work. Nigeria man say, it they work. Yes, it they work, well, well. So listen and listen attentively. Ministry, it deals with sacrifice and obedience. If you are only an obedient person without sacrifice, you won't go far. That's the truth. You will not go far. I listened to one thing about um, the senior son of Bishop Oidopo. I'm talking about um, the name is called David. Okay. The only time that guy could sleep is only four hours. Who dare him to sleep when his father is still awake? So if you see the results they have, you should know why you are still struggling with where two or three people are gathered in his name. There he is. <laughs> yes. I discovered that anything God wants me to do, let me do it in excess. Anything. Because in that manner, you can attract abundance. Not Bishop, not Bishop Abioye. You know, he has a son, uh, Oyidapo Jr. That's, I think that is the name. Yeah. 
Praise God. Now, get to think about that. You could see that that has brought the results. I want you to understand the enemy will strike that aspect of you. He will come because he knows that a lot of men cannot sacrifice. Giving is our problem. Yet, the Bible says there is more blessing in giving than receiving. A prophet must be able to give because what you owe is not yours. Except it is for you. If you don't hear the, if you hear the Holy Ghost and he says give, then give. Anything God wants me to do, I discovered I need to do it in excess. So this thing about tight issue, people are busy arguing, pay tight, don't pay tight, pay tight, don't pay tight. These are all nonsense. Is tightening good or not? Is giving good or not? So if I give, what is wrong? Whether it is called tight or it's not called tight, I'm giving. What matters is give. Do it in excess. That is sacrifice. Okay? Now, when we talk about sacrifice, there are laws guiding sacrifice. Number one law of sacrifice is this. The first law of sacrifice is that giving is not, your giving is not according to what you want, but according to what the receiver demands or deserves. So the first law of sacrifice is that anything you are given is not according to what you have or what you can do, but what will satisfy the receiver. So if I am going to give you a sacrificial seed, okay, or a sacrificial something, it must not be on my terms. It must be on your terms. So when you are giving to God, it must not be on your terms. It must be on his terms. I don't know if you understand that. Okay? On his terms. What will satisfy him? What will make, what will please him? You see, so that is the first law of giving, of, of sacrifice. Yes, of sacrifice. So when you realize it, there are a lot of people that <laughs> are so economical that they can't do that. Yeah. So that is why Jesus said that the widow gave more than the rest. Why? Because it was sacrificial. Though it was not much, but sacrificial. Why? Because that was all she had. So giving all you have compared to the one given from his prophet, it cannot be the same. Yeah. So in terms of giving a sacrificial seed, the receiver has power over the giver. Number two law of sacrifice says this. Says that anything you are offering anything you are offering or you are sacrificing anything you are sacrificing or trying to give to the person are you listening to me listen to me must be what will pain you you didn't hear that one at all what will cost you? So, 
David said, I will never give anything to God that will not cost me. And the son Solomon came and proved people that what his father said was right by offering thousand burnt offerings. What? Today, buy each cow. Each cow may cost, let me, let me see. Each cow may cost, um, let's say 500 US dollars. So 500 US dollars times thousand, how much is it? Almost 50, did I say 50? 500,000, that's half a million. <laughs> half a million US dollars. And that is huge. The law, the second law says that never give anything that will not cost you. These are laws according to scripture. Whatever you are trying to give, does it cost you? Is there a cost in what you are giving? Have you felt it that something has shaked you? Has it shaked your finances? That's what I'm talking about. Has it shaked your, your, your marital life a bit? Have it shaked your time of doing other things, being on social media? If you, 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 you said, I'm giving my time to God, and that time you are giving to God cannot take you away from social media, then you are not... Mm. Said that people who is can't you see somebody just sent me a message right now? Let me read it. What did he say, self? He said he asked me a question that some prophet will always keep a special seat on the altar, on the church altar. Some prophet will even keep many seats there. What is the seat for? Because I have seen anyone, I have not seen, I've never seen anyone sitting on the seat, but it is always there. So he asked this question and I couldn't answer. Okay? And I couldn't answer because my, my time is somewhere. I am not on what answering people's questions. It's not part of my assignment. If you want to know many things, you know where to get it. So I couldn't answer him in time. Not that I didn't really want to answer. But come and see. Before I know it, he has sent another message. You are not serious. <laughs> Now, I am not serious to him, not to my God. Take note of that. I am not serious to him, not to my God. Because if God has not dealt with me, I cannot deal with you. So I am saying this because understand that if you cannot give your time, search that people may look for you and you cannot where they can't even find you, you are not ready. Yeah. Someone says that what to a man of God? You are joking. Our generation is too perverse. Very, very perverse. Yes. And this is what they do and they never catch the grace at all. So you need to know this very well. You cannot be everywhere. You cannot be everywhere. You can't. Of course, a lot of us are everywhere. We are dancing everywhere. Sacrifice. So I've just given you two great laws of sacrifice. And I know that when you use them you are going to be blessed i remember i was really broke and before before i know it one guy hey somebody sent me almost five thousand five hundred us dollars from um is it canada 
and the way I sharpened my mouth to spend this money. Before I realized, the Lord said, He didn't send the money for, for you. Give it to one of your church members who I was praying all the night for that money. I said, Huh? <laughs> but I gave it out. I was struggling, but the Lord said, give it out. You have to sacrifice. It entered me. It entered me. So you need to know this very well. So God bless you. Now, I think the um, last one I want to talk about is... the womb of fasting and prayer. Listen to me. Fasting and prayer is one thing that the enemy knows most believers are struggling to do. Most believers are struggling to do. So start invest time in fasting and prayer. Okay? Invest time in fasting and prayer. Today I'm not going to talk much about that. But the next time we will be talking strictly on how to fast. And how to fast and get answers. And know that it is settled. So God bless you so much. Wherever you are, begin to share. Let me begin to prophesy to one or two people and then I am off. Shika parada ba 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 ba. Shika te barata ba 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 ba. Shika rada ba shanta parada ba 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 ba. Ziki la ba 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 ba. Shiki parada ba ba ba. Se mele mele me kapala da be kapala da ba kapala da ba kapala. Manto logo dobro goto logo dobro goto. Zegede Manti beri de beri de barada 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 barada. Into logo robo do bo 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 do bo. Manti beri 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 beri. Shaka ka 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 ka. Manto lo bo do bo do bo shobara do bo. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. There is somebody you are watching me okay you went and diagnosed and they told you you have appetitis you were told you have appetitis and sugar diabetes appetitis and sugar diabetes i want to pray for you okay wherever you are watching me just lay your hands on the screen. I want to minister to you right now. And tomorrow, Monday, just go and check you are healed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I release healing in the life of this one by the power of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare you are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I decree and declare, be receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce you free from every demon of sugar, diabetes, and appetitis B. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare you are free in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 
So in case you've not subscribed to this channel, please do well to subscribe, okay? So that we can reach to more audience, many more audience. It's my prayer that this year we'll be able to hit, before the year ends, we'll be able to hit up to 20,000, okay? So please remember, try and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe and also share it. Share it, share it, share it. God bless you so much. Now, let me talk to Blessing Moses. Blessing Moses. Blessing Moses. Blessing Moses. Where are you? Oh, okay. I can't see her, so let's proceed, okay? All right. Blessing Moses, how are you? In The Lord said I should pray for you because I saw favor knocking at your door. And the Lord said, any delay in your life is canceled from today in Jesus' name. Any delay that has been in your life is eradicated in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophetically, my eyes are open. And I saw that they wrapped the flag of Nigeria around your waist. I don't know why, but I, I don't know where you come from, but I saw that this Nigerian flag wrapped around your waist. Oh Jesus, what is this? And the Lord said, I should pray for your marriage. Okay? The Lord said, I should pray for your marriage. Because I am seeing a very strong connection. It says, I'm from Nigeria. Wow. I saw a strong connection that God is connecting you with some white people. Some white people. Because I saw a connection that was to come, but it got destroyed. This was white people also. It, it got destroyed. Like there was an issue, okay? But the Lord said, it is still going to work. His plans and purposes for you is going to work. Because there has been a delay. He said, I should tell you from now you will receive a strange speed. And that speed will cause you to travel very, very far. I decree in the name of Jesus, it is done. Blessing, if you know, wait a minute. Do you know someone by name John? Ye kukuro dobo shabaranda maka parada ba she parana ma 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 ala ba 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 because I saw a heavy force that has opened its mouth wide trying to swallow this man. And the Lord said, every evil, every plot from a place like Anambra against this man shall not stand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I decree now by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
He is released in the name of Jesus. He is released in the name of Jesus Christ. Before I want to talk about John, I saw a name, Grace. Grace, where are you? Blessing. When we are done, then I will pray lastly for your marriage. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I saw a name that some, this name is called Grace, okay? Yes. Grace, 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 Grace. The Lord said I should tell you every marital challenge is fixed now in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release God's grace over your life in Jesus' name. Oh God, I really want you to be responding fast, fast so that we could flow, okay? Let me pray for... Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Is it... What's the name? Is it clev, 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 clev what? What is clev? I'm, I'm a bit tired. Blessing, the Lord said, I should pray for you, your marital establishment. And I pray that the favor that has found you shall touch your marriage as well. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Where is the person? Oh. It's, it seems the person said click what? Okay. Click, click, click away. Yeah. Whosoever that has kept their click away. The Lord said I should tell you be careful. Because I saw... A contract and I saw that people are trying to dupe you I am seeing a, a contract that is trying to is knocking at your door but I saw that the people behind it are trying to dupe you for nothing okay are trying to dupe you for nothing in the name of Jesus. The Lord said, every black male that is coming your way shall not stand. Any black male shall not stand. I declare this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh. When I don't see your comments often, it's a sign that probably network, data, something. Okay? So I don't know whether you are there, you are not. Oh, Jesus, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we pray, we pray, we bless God. Amen. I think I've spent... Um, God bless you so much. I'm very exhausted, okay? Yes, so whatever it is, you can contact the prophetess or my admin. Yes. Somebody said, I am also in, uh, okay, marriage with who? Yes, so I see establishment, okay? I see establishment in your marriage, okay? Yes. So we bless God so much. If you want to have access to me, please, let me just say this. If you want us to talk something, contact my admin. 
when you contact my admin, then he can forward you to me and then I can talk to you, okay? But when you chat me direct, I may not have the time to attend to it immediately. Yes. Yes. So you can get the admin's number right away. So let's go. Plus six. Plus six. Hey, did I say plus six? Sorry. Plus four. Six. Seven. Two. Three. Zero. Seven. Nine. Two. Two. Nine. I hope you will understand. Now, if you want to be a blessing, you want to sow a seed, you want to give, you can give through, you can contact that me as well. <laughs> and give as well. Hallelujah. And be a blessing to the ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. So plus... If you see you are there, you can type it, okay? So let me take it again. Plus 4672307-9229. Plus 4672307. 307-9229. If you want to be a blessing to the ministry, you can contact the administrator. Or better still, you can also send it through zero plus two. You contact the administrator, he will let you know. Thank you so much. Love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Aha, uh -huh. I've forgotten something. There is an ongoing prophetic school, a, a prophetic school. We are about to resume another 14 days session. Please be part of it and your life will not be the same. Purely practical prophetic. Hallelujah. And the students can testify of ever attending this prophetic school. So please be part of this prophetic school and God will shift you to another level so contact the administrator contact the administrator by the number i have given you okay and any seed details you want to give the same way thank you so much thank you so much god bless you bye bye see you on saturday <laughs>